Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, I will be talking about paginated reports in Power BI. Now, what is the paginated report? So, the paginated reports are designed to be printed or shared. They are called paginated reports because they are formatted to fit well on the page. They display all the data in a table. Even if the table spans multiple pages, you can control their report page layout exactly. Power BI Report Builder is the standalone tool for authoring the paginated reports for the Power BI service. You can use the paginated reports for operational reports with the tables of details and optional headers and footers. Power BI Paginated Report can also display all of your data in a single report element such as table. You can also add images to the paginated report. You can also color the particular data in the paginated report. So let's get started. If you do not have the Power BI Report Builder, then you can Google it and you can download the Power BI Report Builder. We are going to create a paginated report in Power BI Report Builder. So let's get started. But before that, if you are first time here on my channel and you didn't subscribe my channel yet, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button as I upload the Power BI videos regularly on this channel. So let's get started. So open up the Power BI Report Builder and here I am already in the Power BI Report Builder. I'm going to click on the file and then new. And then this new report window will open up. So I'm going to click on this table or matrix wizard. And then it asking me to choose the data set. However, we don't have any data set and so we are going to create a data set. So I'm going to click on next and then create the data source connection. So I'm going to click on this new and whatever the name you want, you can give it to this data source. Let me give a data source name is reseller report. And then select the connection type. By default, it selected Microsoft SQL Server. For me, I'm going to get the data from the SQL Server. So I'm going to leave as it is. However, you can choose the data set of your choice. And then I'm going to click on build. And then data source is already selected. Now I need to select the server name. So for that, I'm going to click on this drop down menu and then select the server name. I'm going to leave log on to the server. I'm going to leave as it is use Windows authentication because mine is set up on the window authentication. If you have a different authentication, then you can choose the second option and then connect to the database. So I'm going to select the database from uh, this is AdventureWorks DW 2019 and I'm going to click OK. So now we set up that from where we are getting the data. Now let's uh, click on this test connection. I think the name is not allowed with the space. So I'm going to use the underscore. And the connection created successfully. So click OK and then OK. So now we already have this data source connection. Now I'm going to click on next. And you can see on the left hand side database view panel that you have all the tables available in your data source. I'm going to select the DIM product table from here. And then a DIM reseller and factory seller sales. So as I choose my tables here, I can see the fields from those tables and by default selection is auto detect meaning these tables are related to each other based on the database so it detected the relationship between them 
Now I wanted to filter my data by just one reseller name. So I'm going to click on this filter. And currently our column is selected a product key, but my selection should be from the reseller name column. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to change the column name here. So from the deem reseller table and reseller name I wanted to choose, the particular reseller name I wanted to choose for this report. So reseller name and what would be the reseller name value. So I'm going to click on this section and I'm going to give a reseller name. I'm also going to tick this parameter and now we filter the data by reseller name, a bike store and let's run the query here so we can see the data. So now we have this data working perfectly fine and now I'm going to click on next and let's create the report. So uh, first I'm going to choose my uh, product name so that is English product name in this case. If I double click here it will going to put it my columns here and then I want I want reseller name. In fact, I want reseller name in first column on my report. So reseller name and then product name. And then I'm going to select sales order number. And I want the order quantity. So order quantity. And you can see that uh, because it's a quantity, uh, it numbers, so it's straight away gone to the values. I also want unit price and I want sales amount. And uh, I'm going to click on next then. And I wanted to uncheck the, this expand collapse group so we can have the report open. Now I'm going to click on next and then finish. And now we can see here our report frame you can say. And if I run the report we can see our data in the report. And now you can see that our report is ready. You can see the reseller name here a bike store. And then uh, a reseller name, English product name, sales order number, order quantity, unit price and sales amount. Whatever we chose, we have that. The total of the sales order number, I don't want that. So we are going to remove that. And if I scroll down, then you can see here at the end of the page, we have a timestamp on every page. If I put it on print layout and let me increase the size and now you can see your report will look like this on the page. And if I click on my last page, there is a four pages in this report and you can see the you can see the data. Now as I, I already mentioned that we don't want total here for the sales order number and we don't want this total here as well for the product name. So let's click on the design to go back and now we can remove this. So product name, I when you double click on that you can remove that. And if you want, you can, um, when you click on this gray part, you can see the page margin and all that. Now, the you can see that interactive size 8.5 inches uh, wide and 11 inches high. Now, I can change this margin if I want. So, I'm going to change on 0 0.75 inch to make it a little bit wider on the left hand side and on the right hand side so and top and bottom I will leave as it is on one inch 
So I can make changes here on this properties window. I can also add the title here. So for example, I can add the title of a reseller name, which is a bike store sales report. And now let's run it again. And now you can see the, the report like this. Um, if you wanted to make the title in the middle, then you can make the changes the way you want. So for example, I'm going to make it like this and uh, so the text alignment and I can put it in a center and now if I run this then my report looks like this similarly you can increase the padding here you can make the title bold all that kind of formatting you can do here. You can make this column wider to fit the name there. So let's go back to the design and you can give the sales order number a less space because we don't need that. You can also give a less space to the unit price and the sales amount. And let's run the report again. And now you can see it looks like this. However, the sales order number, that column we need to make little bit wider. And let's run the report again. And now you can see it looks much better. Like this. Once you are happy with the report, then you can save it and share it to the Power BI service from the file menu. So guys, this is all about how you can create the basic paginated report using Power BI Report Builder. If you like the content of the video, then please comment, like, share and subscribe my channel. And thank you for watching.